Hello there guys and welcome back to another epic Inex Rule Maths video. In this video we are looking at the reverse chain rule which is an integration technique. It's a method for integration. Now why is it a method for integration? This is related to the chain rule of course it's just the reverse of it. The chain rule is a differentiation method and integration is the opposite of differentiation so we might think the reverse chain rule maybe it's got something to do with integration and it absolutely does so what actually is the reverse chain rule there's no unlike the chain rule or anything like that there's no kind of formula or anything that you need to do in that regard it's more of just remembering what happens when you differentiate a composite function so for example if you were going to let's say have a function we'll call it y equals and we'll do something like 1 plus x squared to the power of five okay and let's say that we wanted to differentiate it so if we differentiated this we would use the chain rule and just to you, you know you so your substitution would be one plus x squared and you would then have y equals u to the five etc but it would end up being 10 x times one plus x squared to the four this would be the derivative of the above function now here's the question if you needed to integrate 10 x times 1 plus x squared to the power of 4 dx if you wanted to integrate this well what would you do well you'd say well I know what the derivative of um, the original function which was 1 plus x squared to the 5 is uh, I know that it differentiates to 10x times 1 plus x squared to the 4 therefore the integral of 10x times 1 plus x squared to the 4 must just be 1 plus x squared to the 5 you're just going backwards right so you're going from here to here when you differentiate so when you integrate you go from here to here you just go backwards you're absolutely right it's true of course you'd add a plus c on the end there when you integrate but it's absolutely right but the thing is is that if you only see this integral on its own you might say um, well maybe we need to do the the product rule or something called integration by parts which you might not know about yet I'll do a video on that in the future but this looks like something that's maybe a bit more complicated to integrate right there's a lot going on here of course you could expand it out but let's imagine that the four was actually a much larger power so what you would do is you would consider the fact that right now we have got the 10x is a multiple of the derivative of the inside function of something that has had the chain rule be applied to it already okay so it's a bit of a mouthful but imagine 1 plus x squared to the power of 4 or 5 or whatever if we differentiate that that's where this 10x comes from it's a multiple of the derivative of the inside of the 1 plus x squared right because the derivative of 1 plus x squared is 2x it's just 5 times 2x, 10x. So the way that you integrate this is by identifying which one is the dominant function, which one is which one is sort of, you know, causing the derivative of the inside function to kind of fly out there. It's 1 plus x squared to the something. But here's what you need to do. You need to consider one power higher than the power that you have. So if you have 1 plus x squared to the 4, what you're going to do is you're going to consider y equals 1 plus x squared to the 5 because when you differentiate something using the chain rule the power drops so when you integrate you should expect the power to increase of course because it's because it's the opposite of differentiation so you should expect that to be true so why don't we use this as a kind of trial let's differentiate this and see what we get and of course we've already done that we end up getting that it is 10x times 1 plus x squared to the 4 which means that the integral of 10x times 1 plus x squared to the 4 must be 1 plus x squared to the 5 plus c now you might say okay um that's quite obvious like you know fair enough sure whatever uh, but actually this is a really really useful method because i'll show you other examples without telling you what the original function is you might say oh that's actually a bit more complicated so let's consider the integral now of cos x 
times sine to the 7x dx. Now all of a sudden you're like, hold on a moment, what's going on right here? How is How do I do this? Is there an identity that I can use for trigonometry maybe? Um, no, no, there's not. This is still the reverse chain rule. Why is this the reverse chain rule though? The reason this is the reverse chain rule is because cos is the derivative of sine. And sine is the dominant, or sine to the seven is like the main function. It's been derivative, it's been differentiated, and a cos has popped out from the differentiation. Because it's already been differentiated. That's why we're trying to go backwards, we're trying to integrate right now. So what you do is you figure out which one's the dominant function. Oh, it's sine to the seven. We add one power to that. So we consider y equals sine to the eight x and then we differentiate that now you might say how do i differentiate that remember that sine to the 8x just means sine x and then raised to the power of 8 so you do the chain rule again these are all chain rules because this is the reverse chain rule so you'd say let u equal sine x um, and then you get uh, y equals u to the 8 and etc and you do the chain rule i've got i'll leave, I'll leave a, a link to the chain rule video but you'd end up getting that dy dx for this guy would end up being 8 cos x sine to the seven x okay where does the cos from come from the cos comes from the chain rule you'll see it happen if you do do this but this is the answer so now hold on a second this is not what we're trying to integrate this is eight times what we are trying to integrate it's eight cos x sine to the seven x we are not trying to integrate eight cos x sine to the seven we're trying to integrate just one lot of cos x sine to the seven x so that means we know already that our answer, the answer to this integral, will be in the form sine x to the 8 times some constant. We don't know what it is yet. So we can already say that this integral is equal to something times sine to the 8x. The question is, what is it? Well, actually, you just need to multiply by the reciprocal of the sort of extra thing that comes on at the end. You've got an 8 there. You don't want an 8. So you're going to multiply by the reciprocal. Why do you do that? And that's got a plus C on the end. Why do you do that? Because... If you differentiate an eighth sine to the 8x, the 8 that comes down that we've seen happens here will get cancelled out with the 1 eighth there. So the answer to this integral is just 1 eighth sine to the 8x plus c. With all of these, you can verify that you've done this correctly by differentiating the integrated function with the chain rule and seeing if you get back to the integrands, what's, what's inside of the integral before it's been integrated. Okay, so that's another example. Okay, let's look at one more example. This is a very common sort of situation. We have something like, let's say, x divided by 1 plus x squared. Now, this looks a little bit different right now. This looks a little bit different to what we've seen in the past. That's because this is a very specific thing. You need to, this is still the reverse chain rule, but you need to notice something for this one. You need to realize, and you do this with any time this situation that I'm about to explain happens. If you have a fraction where the denominator is something, doesn't matter what it is, but the in but the numerator is just the derivative of the denominator, or a multiple of the derivative of the denominator, this is actually a reverse chain rule of a very specific kind. So it's better to just show you what the answer is and then we'll go backwards by differentiating to see that you do get back to x over 1 plus x squared. What we're going to do is we're going to consider the natural log of 1 plus x squared. Where has that come from? You'll see. If we differentiate a logarithm, again, using the chain rule, let u equal 1 plus x squared, you can see this for yourself, that means that the derivative of this function would end up being 2x divided by 1 plus x squared. When you differentiate the natural log of anything, you always get the derivative on the top and the original thing inside the brackets on the bottom. So the derivative of 1 plus x squared is just 2x, and the original thing, 1 plus x squared, is just on the bottom of the fraction, and there we go. Now again, this is not exactly what we're trying to integrate. We wanted the integral of x over 1 plus x squared, not 2x over 1 plus x squared. So when we um, differentiate the natural log of 1 plus x squared, we actually get twice what we want. So actually, we're going to say that our answer to this is only one half of the natural log 
of 1 plus x squared plus c. And you can see this work because when you differentiate this guy, the 1 half and the 2 on the top cancel out, you end up just getting x over 1 plus x squared, just like that. So this is also a reverse chain rule. Now, where does the natural log actually come from? It just comes from this. When you differentiate the natural log of any function of x, it's always the derivative of that function of x divided by f of x, right? So if a, if any integral is in that form ever, you do this. We'll look at lots of examples. This is how you integrate things like tan x and various other integrals. Um, we are going to look at this in some detail in the future. And actually, I will show you just one more. This is going to be the integral of, let's do x e to the x squared dx okay wow hold on a second that looks a little bit confusing because we have a power and that power itself that x is raised to another power it's raised to the power of two so we have this double power thing this tetration well actually it's okay because we just use the chain rule once again we would say let u equal x squared and then we would differentiate that okay because the dominant function here is e to the x squared when you differentiate e to the x squared because of the chain rule a multiple of x comes out and multiplies on the bottom not necessarily because the derivative of x squared is 2x not necessarily 2x but it, it's just a multiple of okay that's fine so what you end up with here is we consider y equals e to the x squared and we differentiate this again you can do this using the chain rule you don't need to be able to just immediately do this but if you use the chain rule here you would get 2x e to the x squared yeah so and again you can verify all of these on your own if you would like to but again this is actually double what we really truly want we only want to integrate x e to the x squared so our true answer is actually going to just be one half e to the x squared plus c because when you differentiate this the 2 comes down and you end up with 2x e to the x squared aha but it multiplies by a half they cancel out you get back to the original integral amazing so really the idea behind the reverse chain rule is it's a mindset it's not a formula it's not anything like that it's identifying patterns it's oh hold on a second there's two functions here but one of them is the derivative of the kind of inside function on a chain rule that's already happened and because i know that integration is the opposite of differentiation i can actually just reason my way through this i can consider different functions um, and see what things happen things see how things you know see how it all unfolds if we go backwards we reverse time before it was ever differentiated and we watch it unfold um, and see what we need to multiply by in that constant in order to make it truly work Really, this is a trial and error sort of situation. Definitely do practice questions on this because it is a weird concept. It's very, I would say it's very difficult to get your head around it. I do understand that, but practice, 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 um, and you will seriously get that and you'll start to identify these patterns, okay? Thank you guys so much for watching. I highly appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.